Hi, Dan, Midwest Technical Sales, Richard behind the camera. What we're going to demonstrate today is how to remove a stuck tape from a tape drive. Now, what we would encourage you to do is send the whole tape in with the tape drive. But sometimes you might run into a situation where you have a secure data center, you can't let media out without following certain procedures, or you have medical information on it, uh, things like that. Now, we also handle media with the chain of custody. So if you're interested in that, we can go into that later on, but basically we follow the piece of media and the tape drive whenever it comes in our facility. Who touches it, where it gets locked up, and the time it gets locked up, when it's removed, when the technician removes the media, media is placed back in the locked facility, and there's a complete chain of custody until it gets packed by FedEx with secure tape on and goes back to you. And usually there are some terms and conditions with that and we've addressed those with people and uh, it, it, it's a fairly secure facility. We also have 24-hour video surveillance here, cell-based systems, motion sensors, uh, about 20 different cameras. We can get IM messages if anything happens. So we're, uh, we feel that we're a pretty secure facility. So what I have in front of you here now is a, a tape drive that was, that's in a canister. And the canisters, you'll find these in Dell ML6000 series, IBM 3310, Quantum I500s. You have to take these two screws off the back and, what, and this would be a good time to just get your camera out and take a picture of this because this particular um, uh, plug plugs into this circuit board back here. Now we've made some special adapters for you here that you can power this on with a bench power supply. And we have this hooked up to a, uh, to a bench supply. And you can power the drive on. Okay. So basically it's powered on. There's a tape stuck in here that you can't see and there's a button on the other side. So it's sitting here ready to go and it's it's stuck. You have it on the bench. I'm going to reach around here and push the blue button. Get this microscope out of the way here. And I hold this button in for a period of time and I count to 15. Okay. And once you count to 15 you release the button and uh, the tape might come out at this point in time. If it doesn't come out, there's some other issue with it. But normally, after that long reset, it would come out. Um, if it doesn't come out right away, just go ahead and let it sit for 15 minutes or so. So, what causes a stuck tape? Um, there's a number of things. One of the things that can happen, and oh by the way, I just want to show you how not to remove a tape from a tape drive. Uh, but like this was done with a screwdriver and it bent all kinds of things inside of the drive. This was an LTO 5, could have been worth $2,200, whatever. Um, customers like to get aggressive and take them apart. And this isn't the way to do it, but, but some people do it this way. Typically what will happen, and you can find all of this information here on uh, lto.org uh, website, but I kind of put something together to explain uh, what, um, when I talk about servo tracks, what is, oh, after that long reset, the tape is uh, making some movement, and I think it's going to come out, that's okay. But in a half inch piece of tape, you have 14 of these data tracks. And each data track has a servo track. And just figure a servo track is like a lane marker on a highway and you want to drive down the center. So the tape head positions itself on this particular servo track. It's got to be able to read the servo track to position the head properly. If you have debris on your um, inside your tape drive or on your head of the tape drive, you can't get it off with a cleaning tape. Here's what a head looks like out of an LTO drive. Within this one half inch 
um, spacing here, which is the size of the tape, you have 14 tracks. And you have a number of servo tracks that position the head. We clean some of the heads. And this is a pretty typical example of the debris that we find on the head. And we've seen it a lot worse than this. Okay. So once that is in a, a has the servo tracks clogged up or with debris on it, the head can't move up and down and read it. Now some of the manufacturers have addressed it with a brush. And what they had on the IBMs, the, the earlier ones, they always had a brush that every time it went over, it went chunk and chunk. And it cleaned out the um, debris from the head. Okay? So it, it helped quite a bit. But um, they've sort of dropped this um, particular uh, method of manually cleaning the head because the manufacturers expect you to use the proper tape for the tape drive you're using. And we have two major manufacturers that we're looking at, it would be HP and IBM. Well, IBM standardizes on Fuji Media, and they use a, a little heavier tape tension. And so then the, uh, the uh, surface of the media can withstand that. If you start putting HP tapes in an IBM drive, HP tapes are designed for a light tape tension. You're going to do something like this. And this is what, look, what it looks like when we um, take a tape drive apart. This is the cover that goes over the top. And you can see I cleaned this part right here and I didn't clean this part. But when you have all this debris built up inside, it get to, gets deposited on your head and it gets deposited in the media. So you have to be kind of cautious about the media you use, but that's really not the purpose uh, of what we're talking uh, today about. Now what I'd like to do is just switch off over to the, the next concept that we have. It's just a reiteration of what I said. Over here we have a Dell, a, a Dell the TL2000. IBM has their version out, HP has a version out. Um, so, but the concept is the same, uh, 24 slots, 48 slots, a picker that goes up and down. Um, you could have a stuck tape in something like this. Now, we have this in our lab right now and it, it's powered off, but if it was powered on, which you're going to have to have it powered on, you can move this picker because the concept that I showed you with the drive of finding that blue button, these guys, I'm just moving, gently moving the picker out of the way, these do not have a bezel on the front. So you don't have a blue button, okay? But the concept with this guy is that you have to find this little red button down here and you push and hold that in for 15 seconds. So just to show you what it looks like inside of a drive. And I just sort of use a little prong thing that we have sitting around over here and again hold that in there for a period of time and you might end up with an eject. Some of the reasons for a tape getting stuck, how to get them out. And if you're tired of watching this, that's fine. I've got one more thing I'd like to show you at this point and it is an LTO chip reader. So what we have here is a piece of LTO media and we have a chip reader that goes through the serial port and we're running um, something called Veritate. Now we, we sell these and get you a pretty decent deal on it. But every time this media is used in a tape drive, it goes in and then right over here is an RDIF chip. Okay? And that RDIF chip has a transmitter built in the tape drive. So every time it ejects it, data from the tape drive is written to this RDIF chip. And it keeps track of that, keeps track of a whole lot of things, but for our demonstration purposes today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how this works. So we'll let Rich get the camera back on there. And what I'm gonna do is I have to tell this, I don't want it. Yeah, you know, it might not like this right now. Okay, so I don't wanna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, read the CM. 
you see down here it's reading the CM. And what it's doing for us is giving us a lot of information from that RDI chip. There's no data on there that you wrote. It's just the statistics about how well it performed. So it'll give us a scan date, the time that we did it. A Veriscore is a combination of how well the drive is performing with the media you're using. Uh, we'll also have a, a who manufactured the tape drive with a particular serial number. It'll also tell us how many times that tape has been mounted. Now this only keeps track of the last four mounts. But when we look at the history of this particular uh, piece of media, we can find that it has been put in some tape drives with some very significant errors. Fatal write error, you had one. Fatal read error, you had one. Fatal servo errors, you had one. In the entire life of this cartridge, 102 terabytes of information has been written but you had write retries of 142, you had retries, read retries of two, and you had 2,567 servo errors. So when we talked about those lane markers before, uh, that's uh, the, the point that we want to make about the clean, cleanliness of your drive. So that'll kind of wrap it up. If uh, you have any questions, Richard will have some information on the video where to contact us, MidwestTechnicalSales.com or RepairMyTapeDrive.com and uh, we can answer any other questions and give you some help on uh, having these devices, um, helping you get some tapes out that are stuck. Thanks for your time.